So this lesson is all about effectively creating prompts because as you can now realize, what you put into ChatGPT is enormously responsible for what you're going to get out of it. And you can put different results in and get different results out. So let's expand upon this so you can find the best way to understand what you really want to know. Effectively creating prompts. You can have levels of explanation. You can explain the sun as if you would explain it to a first grader or an astrophysicist or somebody that works at SpaceX, which is going to be a completely different depth of explanation. You can ask top books I should read this year versus top 10 books I should read as an up and coming musician. Now on to the chat GPT prompt formula. We've broken down how to effectively create a prompt into five simple steps. We have this GitHub prompt book link, which I will show you at the end. And now we'll dive into these five steps. So the first and most important thing, you need to consider the context of your prompt. How is ChatGPT going to engage with you? You can ask ChatGPT to act as something. It can act as a personal trainer. It can act as a therapist. It can act as an expert in gravity. It can act as a genius musical composer. You need to ask ChatGPT to be whoever you want it to be to get the right answer. So if you're asking about music, you want to ask it to be an expert musician. If you're asking about food, you want it to be an expert chef, etc, etc. If you have a text thread already going and you have say asked ChatGPT to act as a travel guide and suddenly in the same chat you change your mind and you have a complete different question, you should say ignore all previous instructions before this one because ChatGPT has short term memory. So it will remember a conversation, which is what allows it to say break down an article into 10 bullet points. And then you can just say summarize number three and it will know exactly what you're talking about and do it correctly. So if you want to change your mind and go into completely new direction, you need to tell ChatGPT to ignore the previous instructions so it doesn't get confused. You can ask ChatGPT to have a different tone when it answers. It can write something serious and formal, friendly and casual. It can explain something like to a five-year-old. It can explain something like to a college graduate. You have an example prompt here that is all of the different steps that we are talking about. Step number two, give your model a task to complete. It's helpful if ChatGPT knows what task are you trying to complete. So if you say your task is to break this article down into 10 bullet points, or your task is to synthesize the information I'm giving you and write me a meal plan, whatever it is, it's helpful to be as specific as possible so ChatGPT knows exactly what you're trying to get out of it. Number three, it's important to be specific. If ChatGPT keeps responding with certain symbols or things that you don't want in there, you can say in quotes, remove this symbol, whatever that symbol might be. Maybe it's giving you a bullet point list when you didn't ask for one. Maybe it's numbering things when you didn't want it to. So you can ask it to remove specific symbols. You can ask it to answer with specific symbols. The more specific you are, the better your result will be. Number four, this is really why ChatGPT is so amazing. You have to ask questions. It's iterative. You can elaborate on things. You can ask it a question. It will write you something and you can respond to it. You don't have to put the whole question in the answer and you can just say, hey, tell me a little bit more about that. Or I didn't understand the third sentence. Or can you rewrite that in a different way? So ChatGPT remembers what it just said to you. So it's able to talk to you conversationally to help explain something in a more digestible way if you needed to. And number five, if you don't like the output, just rework your prompt, try again. That's what I mean by iterative. Sometimes it takes a couple tries and you have to say, hmm, okay, I asked it to act as an expert in this field, but that didn't quite give me the answer that I want. Maybe I should ask it to pretend to be a professor at a university in this field. And sometimes it does take a couple tries, but if you're willing to work with this, this is the skill set of the future. As AI keeps coming in and will be more and more embedded into society, learning how to prompt it, how to ask the right questions to get the results that you want is so, so important. 
A couple unique prompts that are fun to play around with is you can ask, what would I not think of on this topic? Or what are some uncommon or less well-known answers to this same question? You can ask ChatGPT for the things that you can't even think of, and it can help you understand the questions that you need to ask. So now let's take a quick look at this GitHub prompt book. It'll open in this page here. So you scroll down, awesome ChatGPT prompts. Indeed, they are awesome. And you scroll down until we arrive arrive here, act as an English translator or improver, act as a Linux terminal, act as a position interviewer, and so on and so forth. And these are all the prompts that people have already made to act as specific people and experts in different fields and a screenwriter, a novelist. And this tells ChatGPT, how do you want to interact with it? Who should it be? What kind of information should it pull from to give to you? And these are such a wonderful starting point for when you're looking to ask ChatGPT a question, I highly, highly recommend you dive into all of these, well, or at least the ones that are relevant to you.